Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave Daily Update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 on Thursday, June the 20th, 2024. The market during the Globex session, both in the NASDAQ and in the S&P, ran up, reached some resistance levels that could be associated with completing up to and including the minor third wave. Now, the markets came off pretty strongly during the start of the regular session today, uh, where we saw initially, we saw SMCI, the super microcomputer, race up, get itself back above 1,000, and then absolutely sell off over 100 points. Now, if you remember part of my discussion last week, this week, has been that what I'm looking for is, of course, the completion, and that's going to come via the wave count, and via you know counting out each of these individual waves and to make sure that we're really finishing it here. Now, I know that um, for some that it feels like, well, we get up to a resistance level and then we exceed it and then we just push up a target. These are not targets. These are resistance levels. And so what I always need to get my confirmation from as to whether a top or a bottom has put in is the wave pattern. And then so the, the structure on the way up, but more importantly, the structure in this particular case of that initial drop coming off of a high. And what I'm looking for now is the development on a one hour chart of a clean five waves down. And that would put a pretty strong signal together that the highs are in, minor three is complete, and we're beginning that little bit larger minor fourth wave correction. Now, before I jump the gun, I want to state that right now we're looking at the four hour chart, just so that I, and we're starting here with the NASDAQ, so just so that I can show that we still have a possibility that this is just a small fourth wave within part of this move, as hard as that is, but it is a possibility. It was pointed out by my colleague uh, in, in our trade room this morning that it was a possibility, not that either one of us are leaning on it, so, but that it just was a possibility. And so not to deny that possibility, I am stating it now that if indeed we've got to push this up to here, the three up to here. Now, I'm not, it's just a possibility, not one that I'm really feeling is, is got a, you know, over a 50-50% chance, a 50-50 chance of actually being what's in force. And primarily because of that strength that we saw coming off. So let's go down to the one hour chart and then again, review this pattern. So once again, I'm just gonna pull it over from here so we can take a look inside here. And as you can see, we're really just dropping without having that rally, that necessary rally points where we get some green bars in here where we're able to say one, two, maybe, one, two, maybe, or one, two, three, four, five, maybe, so we see we haven't done a clean. So right now, if I had to stick a label on there, it would be A, B, or A, B, or, you know, there's a couple of combinations that we could do. But on the hourly chart, I'm unable to really count yet five waves down. So we need to continue to leave open as easily as this came down. And again, as I have been discussing in preparation for tomorrow's expiration, which is still, now this is just listing, in the SPX alone, in the SPX alone, it's over a trillion dollars it's going to come to settle. And in the SPX, all that settlement is in cash. It settles to cash. Over a trillion dollars is going to settle in cash tomorrow. Now, I don't know how much of that got tossed today and therefore will settle out tonight and then change that that large number that's going to be uh, uh, being settled tomorrow. So some of that may have come in because we did see a little bit of increase in volumes here and there. We did see monetization in NVIDIA, in Apple, in 
SMCI, in Meta, in several of our stocks, we started to see some, what I call just adjustment and monetization of positions, and then reversal of hedges, et cetera. I started to see some of that today. And again, that's according to the options flows, particularly SMCI. For whatever reason, they wanted it at a thousand and they got it up and they got it above it. They monetized those calls likely. And then when done, bing, get out of the stock. And it just kind of really, when it started to come down, it was no denying. It was just, it was just dropping. And here's the other thing that really makes it even more dangerous because of its of its cap weight within the um, NASDAQ, within the other indexes that it participates in. So the same with NVIDIA. That NVIDIA, when it starts to, to really drop and fall, then, you know, it is the heaviest weighted stock within the SMH, that ET, the ETF. It is is now, even in the NASDAQ, it has because of the height that it reached. And again, today, opening up at the 140 level. And let's just take a look as to where this actually, and finishing at a 130. So there's a $10 run, $10 run up, down, high to low in, in NVIDIA. And that's because of where it was closing over the weekend and yesterday was that it became the most valuable stock, the most valuable company within the NASDAQ. It outdid Apple in terms of capitalization. So that's what's kind of going on behind the scenes. And whether these things can be held is now going to be determined very, very quickly. Because if indeed we're going to drop and we're going to fall into a fourth wave, we're going to see a lot of this frothy pricing be diminished. And kind of what I've been talking about is what we saw today in stocks like NVIDIA that actually was trading above 140 prior to the opening and then just right after the opening. And... It's got a low that I see just on a closing basis down here at 130, 130.75, but still, you know, and now starting to get marked down again. So these are important in terms of helping me determine where are we within this thing. And then once we get the froth over, it's like, oh, you know, hallelujah, NVIDIA, you've got all this power now because you're worth X amount of dollars. Now, put that aside. Let's look, look at the market. It is inconclusive. As of today's close, it is inconclusive. Now, what I can kind of say is there's a possibility it's a one, quick one, two, and this is a three, and we're going to do a four, in which case we likely would come up and finish that around uh, 20,084, maybe a little bit higher, but I'm looking for, like it would be kind of flat in nature. So maybe 84 up to maybe 90 up into that uh, that area. Um, it tried to do it, it failed, dropped, tried again, closed. So let's see how this all, how it works out. Now, don't forget, tomorrow we start pre-market with uh, the two S&P PMIs, manufacturing and services. And we also, let me just kind of double check uh, what we also have our existing home sales, and then the 9.45 for the S&P flash U.S. service PMI and manufacturing, 10 a.m. for existing home sales, and 10 a.m. for U.S. leading economic indicators. That's, I've always felt, an important, an important number, the U.S. leading economic indicators. Any major changes there really will put the kibosh on the Fed doing anything. Right, right now, if we we're listening to closely, if we were listening to um, Powell as he spoke at the Fed meeting in the press conference, that possibly won this year, possibly won. It'll be fourth quarter. Well, we're getting ready to drop into the third quarter. Second quarter is over next Friday, a week from tomorrow. Then we're into the third quarter, and of course, that takes us into. Um, the end of September. 
So if we're going to have it in the fourth quarter, it's going to be either at that September meeting or within the fourth quarter right at the end of the year. So how much can we do here? How does the market really want to factor all this stuff in? How, do you know, and, and quite frankly, it's to me, to be honest with you, it truly is down to how things trade and what's trading them. So it, I, I do believe there are individual traders that are going like, oh, this is a good position. I'm going to put this position on. They go and they trade around, but they're basing most of it and often on option flows because that's really, they're no longer the derivatives. I believe they become the underlying and all of these companies and the, the stocks are the derivatives. Interesting concept. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Back here at this hourly chart, but what do I need? What do we need to do to leave it open? I'm going to bring it down to the 15 minute chart and let's again, open it up. So you can see kind of like it did a one and then a little two. And then one, two, three, four, five. Huh. One of three, two of three, one, two, three, four, five, three of three. Very, very three wave nature here. And what it could be A, B, C, D, E, down. Could be. Or A, B, hmm, what could this be? You know, then it gets a little confusing. So, and it could wedge. And we can do both, we can wedge it. And we'll see how this all forms and plays out. And then we have overnight, we've got Asian markets and we have the European markets, they all come in. This high was during the European markets. So pretty much right after they opened, we ran, they ran up and it made that high in the Globex, 20,371. And while we held higher up until we opened, and then we kind of, just fell apart. This was running uh, SMCI up. So we'd already come off pretty heavy. And then they ran it back up. And then when that was done, it started to really drop. And then they ran it again. And then we got a very strong, strong sell off. <clears throat> now, our index here has a low today of 19,958, high of 20,371. So it's over 350 points high to low. That's what I look for to start to give me some thoughts and, and conclusion is like, hmm, could that have completed? Let's review it quickly. This would have been the four. The sub sub minuet wave four. And then we come up one, two, three, four, five. Very possible. But here are our fibs that we were looking at to possibly complete sub sub minuet wave five. And then in turn, we just back it out. Sub sub minuet to sub minuet wave five to minuet wave five to, and then I got to back it all the way out. We go back to the four hour chart, minute wave five. Extremely extended. All of it's been extended. The whole process, again, as I have discussed, this whole process has been a classic, in my view, a classic Elliott third wave. Now, mind you, we're basically just going to be finishing a minor third wave of the intermediate third wave. So it's, it's a classic three of three move. Wave three of wave three. So minor wave three of intermediate wave three. And classic. Extensions, classic, all the way up. We've had extensions inside this uh, minute wave five. We had a pretty much a steady classic uh, minute wave three, minute wave one, also pretty standard, one, two, three, four, five. So it's all of our, our uh, extensions are happening here inside the fifth. Not as common, but not impossible. 
as we ran into just all of this energy being pushed back into Apple, being pushed into NVIDIA, being pushed into SMCI, et cetera, and a lot of those AI stocks. So it's all become very, very interesting. Now, bringing it back down, what can we look for for tomorrow? Well, I'm going to be looking for what we do coming out of all of this. Is this going to end up being a four? If it ends up being a wedge, we're going to look for it to zip back down. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Our support, previous fourth, is way out here. And this would be for the, um, would be coming off in this, well, I would have to stick into here. And, and to be the truth, it's just going to be support. I don't think it's going to finish anything in terms of that would allow the market to go up. But we have support here. We have support here. 19,905. We have the hourly 200 currently at 19,900. Going flat. Now, remember what I told you? Here we are, the hourly chart. Where we talked about how these moving averages, how quickly how quickly they come down and get below the 50. Well, both the 20 and the 13 slip below the 50. The 50 has turned in response to that selling that took place today. So this starts to go down. These come down. And if they start to cross here, which is now going flat, it's very common, very likely that it will. So either all of this continues tomorrow, and now it gets even more intense because of that large expiration in the SPX and what controls it are all the underlying 500 stocks in the SPX. In the NASDAQ, it's 100 stocks. In the ETFs, that's going to vary. We have a ton of stuff, a ton of stuff coming off tomorrow. And the buildup is being that it's going to finish off up at the highs. <laughs> Excuse me again. Now, that's up in the air. That's up in the air. I cannot rule it out. So, But could the NASDAQ do a complete turnaround and go up over 300 points tomorrow? It could. It could. For me to say it can't, that's not going to work. But I think a lot will depend on what our initial uh, economic data is going to start to show. On those PMIs, <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Please forgive me on the coughing. Um, on those PMIs, I mean, if they really start to flip and they're showing, you know, decreases and just not as perceived and estimated numbers, they could throw a wrench into any rally attempts and really put the brakes on and start to get this, okay, we're taking it lower and now we've got a lot of adjusting to do because the gamma flows are going to explode. So a lot of stuff could be going on. A lot of stuff can happen. And we could see this thing really pick up to the downside tomorrow, i.e. the April expiration. If you remember back in April, we had we have more than just the one day prior where that started to come down. But on that April expiration, bam, they hit it. And it made the low. It made the low, which then this one here, Actually, no, I have to go back. I'm sorry, it wasn't that one. It was this one. This was the April low. So you can see that it basically was going down from the 11th. So it really took a week, but we had a day off yesterday. So today, tomorrow, well, we got here, we got here. So if we can't hold it here at 19,747, I think we head for 19,206 or 200. And those those are not unrealistic, to be honest with you. When we see how they come up, when we see if they truly walk in and they take NVIDIA from 140 today back to 103, 120 or lower from the split, Right, we're, if I'm trying to jar, jar my memory. I believe that it was like 102, 103 after the split. Maybe it was 111. My 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 memory's not 
functioning at, at full speed right now. But we've seen that from the split, this tremendous rally all the way up to, again, today, post-split all-time highs. Coming all the way back down. So what happens? That was rejected. That, that you could call a rejection. SMCI heading back up over 1,000 and having it being rejected. Not just a little, rejected heavily. So we could start to see that. We could see Apple. Not that it won't come back. Now, just please understand me again. No matter what, how this comes off, what I believe what it would be starting is a minor fourth wave, which is going to find its support to finish down in here. The fourth wave of one lesser degree. And there it is. Right there. See? Four. So, yeah, it's a big drop from there to here or anywhere in here. It's still a big drop, even in the mid. It's a big drop. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen tomorrow. Again, I believe this all rolls out. But when it's done, go back up. And then I would suspect that we're going to have NVIDIA, SMCI, Apple, all of these companies, that their, their rallies are not done. I do not believe that they're done. So until we get all of this done in the NASDAQ, and being that they're the larger players in the NASDAQ, I would suspect that they're going to also lead coming back up. They may lead going down, and I believe they will lead coming back up. So for tomorrow, it's a tough call. I would initially start to think that we're likely going to have, I'm going to go down to the 15th of this, that we're likely going to have maybe a wedge which should be followed by another drop, put in a new low below where we got today, which is 19,958. We have that support down here at 19,905. And then we have additional support at 19,761. Now from where we are, yeah, that's, that's 250 points down. So let's see if we don't hold it in here and clean this up so that we might be able to count five. If we can count five, then I'm going to look for a wave two, and then I'm looking for it to come down again. Okay? That is the NASDAQ. It's going to be an interesting day. Um, and again, as a day trader, I have to tell you, even as a day trader, you know, because we're looking to just really go in, and, and they were pushing this thing back and forth that it made some of the trading a little more difficult because when you're having a two to five dollar wide market in super microcomputer which there were for great many parts of today and they're trading on both sides so you understand algorithms are doing options and just market order with the stock which is the cover which is the hedge so as these trades were happening stock was trading and it would like hit the bid and then something else would take the offer and you got these flips and flies in this index might have only been 30 seconds might have only been 10 seconds but it could have been enough to just knock you right out for a heavier hit than you wanted just saying as day trading but there were opportunities I think swing trading, you got some better choices to make. And so I even think either option-wise or just, you know, using the underlying, I believe that there's going to be some good choices uh, to go with there. And, you know, SMH um, was down 10 bucks off of that 278. So that was a good one. We had the Qs, hmm, not that bad, but still. Qs got support at 480. And so, yeah. We'll see. But as they start to break these high-level support areas, if they don't hold, get out of the way because they should go. All right. Over in the S&P, same kind of a story. Let me go back out. Let's start again on the four-hour chart so we can take a look. There we have it. I'm going to open this up. So here we have this minute fifth wave coming up. 
minuet one, two, three, and four. And now we got this one coming up, which is the minuet weight five. One, two, three, and four. I'm liking it. It's still pretty clean. And then we're coming into this fifth wave. So I'm going to bring it down to the hourly chart. <laughs> and we're going to go right in here. Three, four. Let's take a look at this. One, two. This one's a little different, right? So if you kind of have to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, but the four, look how big that is. So we'd have to kind of come back and think, okay, what are we going to have in here? One, two, one, two, three, and one, that's not going to work. So I've, there's a lot of difficulty in here because of this rally. So the best way that I really can keep holding it is one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, but the force coming in. So you almost have to consider this complete and put a five up there. I'm not doing it yet because remember I told you what I look for is five waves. Don't got it. At best, you might say three. And here we are bouncing it around inside here. But we're still above 5,500. The low, 55.25 today. The high, 55.88. The resistance for the fifth wave, the sub-sub-minuet wave five, that resistance was at 55.89. All intents and purposes, folks, it hit it. So we're going to keep an eye on this, a very close eye on this. And what would change this is if, well, we'd have to come all the way back down to wave one, which is right there. So if it starts to break below 55.11, let me just get that exact. Actually, 55.09. But I'm going to give it all the way up to, yeah, no, 55.09. If we start to break 5509, this is not a fourth wave. So in other words, if this is one, two, and this somehow is three, and we're coming off into four, well, four cannot overlap wave one, and that's right there. <clears throat> so it's 5509. We got, not incredibly, but close. We got down to 25. So we still have 16 bucks to kind of go. And if it breaks... And we're going to be starting putting fives up and we're going to have to trail it all the way down, right? So it's going to be sub sub minuet wave five, sub minuet wave five, minuet wave five, and minor wave five, and excuse me, minuet wave five, and then minor wave three. And then we're, we would be off to the races in terms of starting a minor fourth wave, which will be an ABC structure. Now, considering how far. I believe it has to go. I don't think it's going to come in as a flat. I do think that it's going to look similar to what we had. A zigzag. Right? Zigzag. And so, I'm pretty sure it was a zigzag. <laughs> Let's go in and break this down. Um, but then once again, I'm changing it, just the color, because it's not a, it's not a minute. It is a minor. But when I go like this, that's very glaring. So I kind of switched it around a little bit. So that's kind of the situation. Now, for a four-hour chart, let's take a peek at our moving averages. Unlike, right? But let's, okay, well, let me break it down to the hour. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. You know, we'll do apples to apples here in terms of moving averages. You can see. The 13 broke below the 20. The 13 is sitting right on top of the 50. The 50 is turning lower and the 20 is heading down. And this slightly starts to break and go flat. So it'll be support on the way down. We have 55.16. That was resistance. Now a little bit of support. More strong. We're going to be here at 55.07. Down to, well, believe it or not, 54.90. So this could all come down into here, hold, and then run again. Or, at best, if they just go from here and start running it, it's three. It's a three. 
and we start breaking back above this 50, it's like, hmm, okay. So we got a lot to just kind of pay attention to, depending on what your style of trade is. You know, if you're a day trader, there should be some decent opportunities. If you are a swing trader, I believe there are some decent opportunities and you may find them in IWM, you may find them in the queues, you may find them in the spiders. So, and I'm just talking about like maybe intraday swings. So it gives you a little bit more room in terms of, you know, you're, you're getting in and you've got to give your stop uh, more room than you would as a day trader in the future. So again, enough to do, I believe. And I think we should have some good action for tomorrow. So we have all of the economic data, plus, plus, big, big, big expiration. So I'm going to... I'm going to wish everybody a great day tomorrow. Have a great trading day. Have a successful trading day. And uh, I will be back on either tomorrow after the close. I'll put on the uh, weekly, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the weekly update. I'll be doing that after the, maybe the close. If not, then it'll definitely be up on Saturday. And the next Elliott Wave daily update will be on Monday, June the 24th. <laughs> Excuse me, I had to count my days. So have a great trading day tomorrow. Have a great weekend.